Thank you for joining us, Rashid. Rashid, first of all, tell us about the allegations. Um, are the allegations true? Is SDP practicing forced labor? And if so, how bad is it? Yeah, so th thanks for thanks for inviting us uh, on. So basically for Saim Dhabi Plantation, right, the, we believe the allegations of systemic forced labor within our operations is uh, not true. Mm -hmm. So in the six months since the petition and allegations were made by Liberty Shad LS, were made public, yeah, I mean, we've continued to engage with the USCBP and also with LS. So we've been repeatedly been asking them to give us a bit more detail uh, information on the allegations, which would in allow us to uh, conduct our invest internal investigations. And, you know, if there are any issues, we can then uh, remedy and rectify it, uh, whatever gaps that may be on the ground. And, you know, when there have been issues which were identified, you know, we've, we have uh, addressed it uh, quickly, right? However, to date, um, neither the CBP nor LS, uh, they've provide, uh, they haven't been, uh, they haven't provided us with uh, more details, which is crucial for us to do our internal investigations. Uh, our objective, right, and the common objective of all our stakeholders is number one, that we want our workers to be treated well and valued for their contributions, and that uh, STP eliminates any incidents of forced labour if they exist. And also to work with uh, work together with our stakeholders to achieve the best results. You know, we've always demonstrated our sincerity and openness to collaborate and resolve uh, any of these issues. And you do audit regularly, I suppose. Yeah. So with regards to our operations, right? Our operations are a hundred percent certified to the Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil, mm -hmm. the RSPO. So with regards to the RSPO, one of the key areas under the principles and criteria for LS, uh, the RSPO is basically the sort of labor practices. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, our operations are audited uh, because of the 100% certification to the RSPO. Our operations are uh, audited every year uh, 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 against the RSPO uh, principles and criteria. And these are amongst the other sort of uh, audits that are conducted uh, on our operations. So tell us, why do you think US CBP and also Liberty Shed have not given you the information you're asking for? Is it because they're worried that SDP will take action against uh, the whistleblowers uh, in its organization? No, Sam W Plantation, right? We have never and we will never take action against any whistleblower. Now, if anything, we, we have recently even introduced further steps to enhance our whistleblowing protection. And under the RSPO, we also have a uh, human rights defender policy in place as well. So we have always demonstrated our sincerity and we are, you know, a trusted company uh, with uh, all of our stakeholders and considered one of the leaders in the industry as well. So we, 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 we set ourselves uh, very high standards, which we implement across our operations. And, you know, if there are any gaps in our operations, we will quickly fix it. So employees can go to management and say that perhaps things are not well and management will take action immediately? Yes. So basically in our operations itself, you know, we have multiple grievance uh, mechanisms available in place. So just recently as well, you know, uh, back in 2019 in Malaysia, we introduced an independent third party hotline, which is made available to all of our workers uh, across Malaysia. And then these, uh, this hotline itself is, uh, is basically made available in all the national language of the migrant workers uh, in our operations. And then in the event that any grievances are channeled to the independent hotline, you know, it will then be you know, uh, channeled to the uh, appropriate level for rectification uh, and remediation and investigation as well. So there are multiple sort of, uh, multiple sort of uh, grievance channels available to all of our workers. And we're 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 always in the mode of you know continuous improvement to try and uh, further improve these grievance channels and to also make sure that you know all of our workers are aware uh, and are comfortable in using all of these uh, mechanisms which are made available to them. And this is for all your plantations across the globe. Yes. So uh, so all across the globe we have uh, grievance mechanisms available. Uh, with regards to the hotline itself. Uh, we piloted it in Malaysia back in 2019 and uh, in two, 2020, we've rolled it out across the entire of Malaysia. And the reason why it's specific for Malaysia for now is because of the, 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 the situation in Malaysia where we have uh, migrant workers uh, speaking different languages. And, and this is basically one of the channels that we want to make available to them to uh, air their grievances, if any.
Correct me if I'm wrong, but the allegations also include um, um, use of practice or use of uh, child labour. Um, I think our questions earlier have been more on forced labour, but what about child labour? And we've spoken to some uh, government agencies and they said that um, to a certain extent, the use of child labour could be uh, perhaps something uh, of a normal practice for parents to bring their kids during school holidays to help them uh, at these plantations. What, what do you make of that? Yeah, so we have a very strict child protection policy in place. So, you know, children, uh, they are not uh, they are not allowed to enter, you know, the operations uh, at all. Mm -hmm. And basically, with regards to, uh, for us, when it comes to the children, uh, we, we ensure that we make available uh, opportunities for the children uh, to have access to education and uh, uh, child care centres. So, for example, in, in all of our operations, we have uh, child care centres which are made available to our workers so that you know they don't have to bring them to uh, to the uh, to the uh, to follow them and you know they, they can then be kept uh, in the childcare centers and the, the, the sort of workers don't have to uh, be worried about uh, the welfare of the children while they are working and then we are also uh, you know for example in uh, in Sabah we also work with you know an NGO there to 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 sort of set up humana uh, humana learning centers Mm -hmm. for uh, for children of migrant workers who are in, in Sabah as well. So the key thing here is basically we, we, we put in uh, the sort of uh, practices and uh, things in place to ensure that you know the children do not have the, uh, have the opportunity to go into the, uh, the operations and they can uh, stay in either the schools, education centres or childcare centres while their parents actually uh, are working during the day. So how is um, Sandabi Plantation going to respond to this um, action by the USCBP? And what has Sandabi Plantation done to respond to this uh, WRO? Yeah, so with regards to the CBP itself, you know, we are engaging with the CBP and we continue to do so. I mean, we've asked them for the necessary, necessary relevant information uh, for us to take any corrective action. And because we believe that is urgent, in the event that you know there are you know gaps uh, which are pockets of issues in in our operations, right? Mm -hmm. So we've also engaged with Liberty Shed as well, and you know as per their suggestion, uh, we've also appointed PwC to mediate the process where the, uh, Liberty Shed uh, would be able to then uh, share with us further details uh, with regards to their allegations, and we are exploring all options uh, uh, available uh, to us to uh, solve this matter. However, in the meantime, sorry. However, in the meantime you know, we are we are combing through our entire operations to ensure mm -hmm. that they are full compliance uh, with our own policies and procedures, and also uh, ensuring that you know they are they continue to be aligned to the RSPO's uh, principles and criteria. If, if you don't mind, share with us how big is the US market to sign Dabi Plantation? Yeah, for for us. Uh, you know, our total sales in the US contributes around 22 million ringgit per annum. Mm -hmm. So, you know, although this may not be a big amount comparative to, you know, our overall earnings, however, the main concern for us is basically the reputational damage that has been caused. Because, you know, Simon W Plantation, we're considered an industry leader and we're trusted by our customers and our various stakeholders. And you know, we've worked hard, you know, throughout the years to basically uh, develop the re reputation to get to where we are today. So, you know, we want to rectify this uh, situation as soon as possible and to ensure that all the stakeholders uh, are not affected by this particular, you know, uh, issue. In terms of percentage, how big is that to your revenue? Um, it's, 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 it's quite small. It's quite small. Have your customers perhaps raised this issue with you? Yeah. So uh, part of uh, part of the, the the things that we are doing now is we are engaging with all of our customers now to try and explain to them the the situation uh, that we are in, and you know, we are keeping all of our customers abreast with you know, the progress that we are making, and uh, if there are any out outcomes uh, with regards to this. And the key f feedback that we are getting from our customers, you know, they want to know our uh, our plans moving forward and the progress that we are making. Okay, and how much will Sime W Plantation lose in terms of revenue earnings as a result of the WRO? No, at, at this point in time, you know, um, again, uh, the, the, the US market, like I mentioned, is now is only around uh, 22 uh, million per annum. Mm -hmm. And uh, for now, you know, the, the WRO specifically says that, you know, it's only for uh, palm oil that's produced in Malaysia itself. 
-hmm. and you also have to bear in mind that you know we also have uh, operations in uh, Indonesia, yeah. and we also have operations in Papua New Guinea as well. So, if with regards to you know the direct uh, potential risk is basically the 22 million uh, per annum. However, if you look at the uh, the indirect risk with regards to uh, the the sort of you know customers who are buying from us uh, due to our reputation as a responsible company. So that that's something that we're we're currently uh, looking into, and you know that's something which basically you know we are always engaging with our customers to ensure that you know the trust that they have with regards to the uh, products that we produce uh, remains intact. Are you also uh, talking with uh, perhaps FGV uh, because I think we all know that FGV was slapped with the same ban uh, before a few months before uh, Sam Dabi plantation. Have, have you also talked with uh, FGB to see how the both uh, both these companies can uh, perhaps reduce uh, resolve this? Yeah, I mean we we, we have been engaging with uh, with FGB to understand you know uh, what uh, what they are doing to respond uh, respond to this particular uh, this particular thing. But you know on our side you know our focus is basically the WRO which is basically imposed upon us, mm -hmm. and then the, the focus for us is number one to to see what we can do to sort of uh, remove the WRO. Engage with the CBP and uh, and Liberty Shed, and and more importantly, you know, to ensure that you know if there are any gaps within our, uh, our operations, to rectify them as soon as possible, if any. What about other uh, government agencies, MPOB, MPOC, all these government agencies? Uh, are you also engaging with them to see how you can ensure that this is not an industry wide, or this will not become an industry wide ban? Yeah, I mean. Uh, we, we have been engaging with all of our uh, multiple stakeholders as well. So be it you know, the, the government agencies, uh, our customers, you know, our shareholders. So all of them, we've, uh, we've, we've been spending quite a lot of time reaching out to them and also explaining to them our situation and also to sort of uh, talk to them uh, and explaining to them, you know, these are the actions moving forward for us and the challenges that we face. Uh, so, you know, that is an ongoing process that, you know, we, we are keeping all of our stakeholders uh, involved uh, in, in that. Yeah, but you know the main thing is basically you know engagement with the uh, CBP and LS, and also to look into our operations to 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 see whether or not you know uh, there are any gaps, if any. Tell us about COVID nineteen and the current uh, MCO and how that is affecting your current operations because I think we've heard and we've read how companies have um, not followed their SOPs, which has resulted in. Um, huge number of cases in their or on their premises. Um, tell us about your practices uh, during the um, uh, MCO and also because of COVID nineteen. Yeah. So with regards to you know the the, the practices that uh, due to COVID nineteen, one of the first few things that we did we had to do uh, when the the whole uh, COVID nineteen started uh, early last year was we implemented very strict uh, standard operating procedures SOPs. Mm -hmm. to sort of uh, ensure the safety and health of our, of our uh, workers. So that includes, you know, things like social distancing uh, during, the, during the operations, uh, things like, you know, ensure that, ensuring that, you know, uh, sanitizing uh, stations are made available and to also ensure that, you know, there's restrictions of moving uh, in, in and out. So some of the challenges that we've had is basically number one is, you know, with regards to our, our, the workers that we have, uh, you know, because a lot of them are uh, in Malaysia specifically are migrant workers. So, you know, we've been receiving uh, a lot of grievances uh, this year itself that, you know, migrant workers who are scheduled to go back uh, to their home countries this year, uh, basically they, they can't go back because, you know, uh, due to the travel, uh, international travel restrictions. So that's why, you know, uh, we were looking at, you know, ways to communicate to them uh, on, uh, to explain to them, you know, the, the difficulties that we have in, you know, actually getting flights to go back to Indonesia or, or India. And, you know, when there was uh, quite a bit of uh, people uh, to go back to in India, we actually then you know, chartered a, a private flight or, uh, to, to fly them all the way back to uh, India, uh, which is basically uh, covered, uh, covered by us. So we're looking at various ways to, number one, protect the safety and health of our workers and to also ensure that, you know, um, it, uh, there is freedom of movement uh, for, for our workers who want to uh, go back to their home countries. And my last question is, Rashid, how will all this affect your output uh, for this year, looking at or taking uh, the COVID-19 into consideration and also the MCO, the current MCO 2.0? I mean, we're, 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 looking, at, we're, we're looking at how uh, the, the, uh, it will be impacting. So things like, you know, one of the challenges that we have is basically the sort of restriction of 
uh, workers coming into uh, into into uh, into the country because in Malaysia itself, you know, we're we're highly dependent on migrant workers uh, at this point in time. So you know, one of the, some of the things that we're doing is you know we we are accelerating our uh, local recruitment. So uh, we're trying to recruit more and more uh, locals to work in our in our estates. Uh, we, we are also looking at you know ways to you know bring back the the workers who who were who are stuck in uh, in their home countries who were back uh, for for holidays. So you know eventually it would potentially impact our output because because you know there, there is a, a lack of uh, there is a shortage of workers uh, workers uh, in in our operations. But you know we are looking into uh, all options to to sort of uh, resolve this issue. On that note, thank you very much, Rashid, for joining us. Yep. Thank you.